Sure. So welcome to this exciting event. Um, it's a transformative opportunity for you um, to learn from, I, I believe, somebody that is um, truly one of the next game changers in the world around the ideas around conscious leadership. She's got very practical methodologies, um, very powerful methodologies. Her book, um, Evolution Revolution, which I was fortunate enough when I met her, I see somebody I stalked on LinkedIn because I was like, wow, I really, I love what she has to say. And I think she'd be a great master teacher. This was really when Shifco was just a gleam in our eye and it really wasn't a real business yet. And I stalked her and we got to know each other and started kind of kicking the tires on different ideas. And she sent me a pre-release of her book. And then of course I bought the um, official version when it came out so I could give her a review. But the, the things that I learned from Abby, um, you know, there's meditation and there's peace. And those two things are not always the same. There is um, being present and then there's presence. There is slowing down and being still. And these differences, these nuances, I really credit Abby and her book, Evolution Revolution, with helping me learn how to be still and helping me learn presence versus just simply being present. And then also in some of the relationships, um, I have this little switch in my head where I'm this very calm and patient person, but man, when that switch flips, this Igor comes out that I don't know who that person is. I don't like that person. And so through some of the techniques in her book and through some of her courses in Shifco, which um, I'll talk just a minute about before she takes over, really, really helped me unpack where that, where that was coming from, those little hurts inside that somebody was really pushing and how do I release those hurts and really move into the space of leading with positive energy. So um, uh, Abby's courses for, if you're a Shifco member, her courses are in the core. Um, and if you go into the core and you click on, you know, master teachers, you can find her and then you can see the courses that she has available. Also on our YouTube page, our public YouTube page, several of her programs are there as well. Um, and with that, um, and with deep gratitude, Abby, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you for that. Terry, and I, I want to say we were mutual stalkers, so I appreciate you stalking me. I was stalking right back, and so thank you for that intro. Um, as you'll get to know me, you'll see that I'm passionate about conscious leadership. Um, spent 20 years on Wall Street leading and then decided to get into um, coaching consulting and then found my niche around conscious leadership, so thank you. Yeah, and and it, this is like a probably the sixth or seventh webinar I've done, so you can go back to the YouTube page like Terry mentioned, to see the others. So this can stand alone, but there's more out there. So I'm really glad to be with you all. And there's this notion of leading with positive energy. There's really an opportunity for us to be more conscious in the world. And that is to be more positive. Because really the, the, you know, the negativity bias in the world is really strong. I mean, we're, we're used to focusing on what is wrong and how we make mistakes. And we're confident in expressing our negative opinions about ourselves, a person or a situation. And we're, we're you know, often confident in accepting the negative things people say to us, whether it's true or not. Ironically, we all crave attention and we all wanna be seen. So this is the opportunity to expand our rep repertoire. So if you, you, you know, Cherry, I appreciate the intro of me. And if you get to know me, I'm very pragmatic. Like where does the rubber meet the road? We can talk about being conscious and all that, but this is another invitation to turn, like to move beyond buzzwords and into embodiment. You know, cause in this modern world, the learning development function is no longer reserved for companies only, you know, navigating the human condition and relating to ourselves and others uh, requires skill and mastery. And just like all the other skills I teach, navigating positive attention is a place where we have to dedicate real effort and energy. And like everything else, you probably, if you see my other webinars, I stress this, you know, 
it has to do with conditioning. Conditioning is useful, but if left unbridled, we can't meet the demands of this modern world of a global economy. And we can't meet the demands of relationships in a modern world if we don't know about our conditioning. And the conditioning is to overcome the brain's wiring for efficiency, the grooves in our brain, causing us to be sloppy and lazy and use platitudes for positive energy instead of being more um, present with our positive energy. And instead we can make a choice here to expand our nervous systems and come, become more proficient in giving and receiving attention you know, to be more positive. You know, one of the core aspects of, con of a conscious leader is they, they are awake to themselves. They're attuned to the conditioning, so they don't let the negative negativity bias overcome them. You know, they have a commitment to presence as a way of life, um, an awakened mind that sparks an invitation to presence. And it's through presence that we can overcome the inertia of conditioning and have more agility. And it's an ability to expand into positive energy as part of our behavioral toolkit and flow with the natural homeostasis of our nervous systems. Our bodies love homeostasis and we can rely on our nervous systems to keep us into homeostasis. And this is an opportunity for us to turn off some of the negativity bias and have equal weighting, if you will, to positive energy. Now, this is what you want to think. You know, the research says focus on five to one. Well, what does that mean? So in the workplace, we know extensive research done by numerous people determine high performing teams are characterized by an atmosphere of like buoyancy. They show appreciation, and encouragement to other members of the team. They create emotional spaces that are expansive and open to possibilities for action and creativity. High performing teams don't get trapped into limiting dynamics, um, such as limit cycles and fixed points, if you will. They don't get stuck because they're able to maintain a high level of positivity to negativity. So it's been found that among high performing teams, the expression of positive feedback outweighs the negative feedback by a ratio of 5.6 to one. So there's that five to one. By contrast, low performing teams have a um, ratio of 0.36 to one. And let's go a little bit further here for couples uh, and relationships, intimate relationships, we can refer to the Gottman Institute. I mean, John Gottman has been around for years and has done extensive research on this. People on the webinar here probably recognize that. So to understand the difference between happy and unhappy couples, you know, Gottman Institute also refers to this five to one ratio. Like they can tell within 15 minutes how a couple argues and whether or not they'll make it. So this is this magic ratio um, that makes love last. This is five to one. So that means for every negative interaction during conflict, a stable and happy marriage has five or more positive interactions. So you can continue to think five to one because the research supports it. And then by, and, 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 you know, being positive has benefits. So this is this mind body connection. You know, it's just with my teacher last weekend. And she said, it, I say this too. It's like, if you're going to make up a story, make up a good one because we, our minds don't make up uh, positive stories. They make up negative stories. So if you, that's this mind body connections, again, relationships last with positivity and teams are high performing. So here is your first key takeaway, you know, and um, this topic can get really extensive, but you know, you can just stop and investigate. Here's the skill. Like, am I always looking for the shoe to drop? Or, you know, instead, can I expand into positive energy? Like, what is my relationship to positive energy? Do I limit the amount of joy in my life? Uh, do I always take a negative view on things? Am I, you know, being influenced by social media and the negativity bias in the world. So that's the first uh, key takeaway here is just to stop, get present. So presence is the foundation of everything and ask, what is my relationship to joy and po being positive in the world? And now that we know what the research says, you know, what is the skill? And so if you get to know me, a lot of these words get, um, 
pollute it, like love and some other things and positivity. You know, it's wise and intelligent to dive into the details rather than dismissing definitions. Because when we're exact about what we're talking about, we can then gauge that versus our behavior. You know, you're, we can't hit a target we can't see. So if you get to know me, you know, I'm very big on exactly what are we talking about? I don't care which definition we use, but then how does that imply in the world, in the real world? Because again, for when we know exactly what we're talking about, we can bring this into our direct experience, which then informs our awareness and then impacts our behavior. Because one thing about conscious leaderships and conscious human beings, they are aware of their behavior. So this is about uh, exercising our muscle to give positivity equal weighting, expanding our toolkit. And there are many different types of positive energy. This is the opportunity to shift to more awareness and consciousness. So let's do, let's dive into some of the specifics. Now, I'm going to give you, give you a baseline. I'm always in favor of taking the baseline and the framework and then go out and experiment. You might come up with more positive um, terms, but I'd like to be exact in what we're talking about. So let's go with the first one. So I like to break it down into a handful there here. So love, for instance, love is to have a pr profound tender affection for, to have a strong like for, and to take great pleasure in. So you notice I'm reading the definition. This is where we can shift from platitudes into expressing more clearly. So you're the best. Okay, that might be okay the first time, but then it gets old, right? You're the best. You're the, Terry, you're the best. Terry, you're the best. Terry, okay, you've said that before, right? It gets old. How about this instead? I love how I feel working with you. I learn so much about myself. So you can see the difference there. Instead of going into the conditioning, mine is you're great or you rock. My two condition responses for everything positive is you great or you rock. So notice how that can get, Sherry, yeah, right? <laughs> you're the best. Okay, those can get old, right? So this is an opportunity to really start expressing ourselves and give attention and receive attention. So compassion. So this is a, a sympathetic consciousness of others' distress together with a desire to alleviate it. So here's one, shake it off, it'll be okay, there's always next time. <laughs> well, how does that land, <laughs> right? Doesn't resonate a whole lot, right? As opposed to, I see how important the project is to you and how sad you are that it didn't go as you had hoped. So see how that matches more and then a person feels more seen. I'm gonna do a sidebar here. And I did this, I think on a different webinar, but it's important, really important now in this modern world to recognize that there is actually a biological difference between empathy and compassion. So now we can draw on uh, His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, who is in famously intrigued by neuroscience. So His Holiness gave blessing, give a, bless, a blessing to a series of studies of Buddhist monks and they were put, um, it included neuroimaging. So what has been discuss, discovered is that empathic states are more easily navigated when we ma manage a detached distance. So it's, it's like this. So with empathy, really what we say, okay, be empathetic. So put yourself in my, somebody else's shoes. Well, here's what happens biologically. If I'm feeling your pain and I take it on, now I'm distressed. So there's two people distressed because if you're in stress, any kind of stress response, distress, and I take it on, now we have two people that are stressed out. And then I'm, both of us are unlikely to be able to do anything about it. But where with compassion, it's more of I hear you, I'm here with you, and what support do you need? So it's, I'm able to have a detached empathy, if you will, and my biology is not getting hacked and overrun by the limbic system. So then we have one person able to support someone else. And like with empathy, then it's like putting, throwing gasoline on the fire. Whereas with compassion, you know, I'm more able to support someone and go into action to support them. Cause let's face it, you know, 
while having your pain acknowledged is great, you know, receiving support and presence and being seen in solutions is more satisfying. So I wanted to do that sidebar because it's really important to understand this, this empathy versus compassion. And you can read more on a blog of mine called Let Go of Empathy and Cultivate Compassion instead. I just want to bring this up because we know a lot more today, right now, on October 11, 2022, about how our brains, our biology, our physiology affect our behavior. And that's in essence what we're talking about. We want to behave more consciously with people and want to have more satisfying interactions. So let's go back now to the list of positive energy. So we just covered compassion, went a little bit deeper on the biology there. So appreciation. So this has to do with acknowledging um, something in someone else with great detail. So imagine saying, you know, <laughs> I should put your rock, you rock, because that's one of my famous ones is you rock. <laughs> so it's like, you're awesome, right? So that might be okay at first, but how about this instead? I appreciate how diligently you focused during our meeting and kept the group on, on track. So notice the difference in that and also how the natural feedback loop then comes in. You're awesome, just land with, okay, I did something right, or I'm doing okay somewhere. As opposed to if we say how I, I appreciate how diligent you focused during the meeting and kept the group on track, that's a more um, intelligent feedback loop for me to then register my own experience of myself and keep going. So then there's celebration. So to celebrate is to oversee a notable occasion with festivities, to mark by festivities or other uh, deviation from routine. So this is celebration. So notice these definitions are just slightly different. So here, let's compare some of these. Here's a platitude. Great job, Terry. <laughs> Great job, you know, gets old, right? How about this? I'm celebrating your promotion and how you've been uh, focusing on your professional growth. How about we grab dinner to celebrate? So see how much uh, more attention that's paid to the situation a person feels really seen as opposed to your awesome, great job. Can I make a comment on that one? Yeah, um, absolutely. Yep, go for it. Yeah. I feel like the energy of joy uh, which I really struggled with. That was one of the things that I identified in the last couple of years was really missing in my life. Like I was happy, I was satisfied, I felt complete, but I wasn't really feeling joy. And as I have unpacked that energy in my body, I find it's easier for me to celebrate with others, whether it's virtual high fives or being specific about what I'm celebrating or doing something with a little more personal um, aspect to it, that allowing that energy of joy to grow in my body makes it easier to celebrate. Yeah, yeah, yes, and to that. Like, so this is this is all an aspect of joy. So, because like you know, in emotional intelligence, I put all these terms in the happy bucket, joy bucket, and you know, look, going back to the you know, you know me, I'm all about biology and physiology, but our body does love homeostasis. So it's never going to let you go really low and it's never really going to let you go really high. And so a lot of people with this negativity bias in the world, especially like, look, the group here is like hard charging entrepreneurs and people who get shit done, right? That's great. So keep doing that. But we have a tendency to beat, beat this ourselves up and beat each other up. So this is an opportunity just to stretch into more positive energy. Again, um, you know, there's this whole, this uh, notion that people can't take enough joy. So that's when it gets to like, can you stand the joy that's there? And can you, can you really like expand into how well things are going? Because we're usually waiting for the shoe to drop. And some people call that an upper limit problem. So much so that you see, you know, where it's a classic thing, with movie stars and celebrities doing really, really well. And then they, they, they can't expand into the upside. And so they do something to um, sabotage themselves. Like uh, I'm thinking of so much, like Charlie Sheen, you're, I don't know why he's coming to mind. Some of you may not know him, but Charlie Sheen was making like 2.5 million on a TV show and like went on a drinking binge and all this. So that's where these upper limit problems come in. So thanks for that, Terry. Yeah, we're really talking about 
um, expanding into joy and positive energy. And then there's recognition, and this is to acknowledge formally, to acknowledge or take notice in some definite way. So notice how these elements of um, joy are just a little bit different of positive energy. So here's a you know, great job. <laughs> That's a play, you know, you're seeing the, the comparisons of these, you know, platitudes. They you know, the first one's okay, but then it starts to be okay, she's gonna say great job. Okay, heard it before, right? How about this instead? I want to recognize your significant impact on our business and your model leadership. I'm offering you an assignment on a high profile project. You know, that's much thorough, right? It's much more, um, again, the feedback loop is there. And for me, think about it. For me to shift from great job to saying something like this, I have to stop and get present. And the more present I am, the more connected I am to myself and others. So presence is the core of everything. And that's another webinar, but um, Terry spoke to that. And then finally, I'll leave, left, leave this for last, but really shifting, what I'm talking about is shifting to a life of gratitude. So gratitude is a feeling of thankfulness, a quality of being thankful, appreciative of benefits received. So this is where we're thanking people or thanking someone you know, that would be great. You know, here's a, a platitude. That's one that I, that I say, that would be great. So I catch myself in my conditioning. You're noticing these are conditioned responses as opposed to thought, um, thank you for offering to lead the project. I feel grateful for your support. In fact, my designer, my designer designed these slides. And so I was like using the you know, he came back and said, great job to me. And then he, on the email, and then he changed it to say, I appreciate how you did X, Y, Z. And so the, the conversation, like we're just growing together, my designer and I, because he's designing these and he's thinking, okay, how am I doing? So when I think of positive energy, I break it down into these core six here. You know, there might be more, but I find, you know, really this is under the joy bucket and less is more. So I start here. If you have others to add, I highly recommend you do that. Again, this is the opportunity to wake up, to be more conscious and bring more awareness to our interactions. So then your second takeaway here is like, you know, where, do, where can I shift from platitudes? Where do I brush off positive energy? You know, and here's the other thing, from the receiving end, like, do you know how you like any of these communicated to you? You know, are you aware of how you like to be recognized or with your part, you know, business partner, business, uh, intimate partners, any of this, and particularly in uh, teams, you know, I spend a lot of time in leadership. Every time I ask a group or an individual, how do you like to be recognized? The answer is like, well, I don't know. Well, how can you feel recognized if you don't know how you like to receive recognition? And also I'll add that we spend a lot of time um, wanting people to know the secret mystery of how we like to receive attention, right? Like we make people figure it out. I'm like, no, this is how I like to receive love, you know, compassion, any of this. Know that about yourself and you can communicate that to others and we don't have to figure it out. Then it's not a big... Um, yeah, it's not a mystery to each other. This uh, gets us right running out of the gate then. Let me see, there's a note in the chat. Does someone have it? Let me just check that real quickly. I'm gonna open it up for, um, yeah, great point. If we talk to others the way we speak negatively to ourselves, sometimes we wouldn't have any friends, <laughs> right? So yeah, well, right, well said. That's really well said. Thank you for that. <laughs> so. Yeah, so let's keep going here. I'm going to open it up for questions and comments. And, you know, uh, we're, we're, I'm sure we'll have a lot to say here. Here's what I, here's a, an important point I want to make. So what am I, what I'm talking about, what I'm not talking about actually is the just be happy trap, the don't be worried, be happy. This isn't some overlay about avoiding or escaping. Again, joy is just one of the five core emotions. When we strive to be happy all the time, we suffer. Like, think about it. You know, the pandemic, we're coming off of the pandemic, but during the pandemic, oh, just be happy. 
you know, I cringe at that. That's in, it's almost inappropriate to be happy during a pandemic. You're going to feel angry, sad, scared. And it is possible to feel angry and happy at the same time, along with other emotions. So my sense is you can see the futility of the happiness overlay. And you can have an overall positive outlook and sense of peace while letting all emotions um, to flow easily. You know, I'm thinking of my, uh, my mom, Terry knows this, but I uh, was supporting my mom. We uh, moved her into assisted living, but I was at her house and, you know, we decided it was time for her to leave her house. And her friends were saying, oh, well, look on the bright side. You get to be closer to family. Well, yes, that, that's an important point, right? That is part of the joy of where she was moving back up to um, my brothers and the rest of the siblings. But, you know, it's also okay to be mad. And I said to her mom, it's okay to be angry also. Yeah, the upside and the cool part is that you get to be close to your grandkids, great grandkids and all that. Check that box. That's the happy part of it, the joy part. It's also okay to be angry you know, because you're leaving the house that you were with my dad for years. Yeah. And you know, you're in your eighties now you'd rather be 50 and with, with my father who died in 2009. I'm like, it's okay to be mad. So we can hold both of those anger and joy in the same space. I cringe when I hear these people like, don't be angry and these negative emotions, emotions aren't negative or positive. Each has a single a signal behind it. Yeah. So actually, when you start to get really familiar with your emotions, you don't have to put on this happy face. You can express joy when joy is, is ready to be expressed. You can express anger in a real present way. Because again, just trying to be happy, you know, when you just say, I want to be happy all the time. Well, then, you know, when something happens that we feel angry about, why put an overlay on it? That's another example of just deeper presence. And as I mentioned um, in the beginning, we can expand our repertoire. So all the tools are easily uh, accessible to us at any time. These are behavioral skills necessary for, necessary for our world. And aside from the specific skills I just discussed, I mean, what we're really talking about it is really a big shift um, from suffering into gratitude. I mean, look, let's face it. If you're attending this webinar, you're a privileged person, right? You have food, clothing, and shelter you're provided for. But what we fall prey to is this, what I call privileged person suffering, PPS. Look, there's a lot of important things going on and there's some important things that happen to us that affect us, are painful and difficult to deal with. But, you know, we don't have to suffer through it. This is where pain versus suffering. We can feel the pain of a moment, but not have to suffer through it. And by learning behavioral skills to support you in waking up and being more conscious, you can avoid this trap of prison person suffering, privileged person suffering, because there's really an addiction to drama and suffering in the world, and we don't have to fall into the trap. You know, another, <laughs> another word we call is first world problems, like literally, like you know, in Ukraine, they have to worry about bombs going off. We don't have to here on this call, on this webinar. And we, for that, we can stay out of the well of suffering. Because when you can really feel great, grateful for what we do have because we're privileged people, then we don't suffer. And then, you know, what you want to watch out for is people trying to grab you and go into the well of suffering and drama. And two, you know, conscious leadership is all about agility. So having, you know, where the, being aware of the negative to negativity bias, being able to be really intelligent about our positive energy and expand into it. And with that comes constant learning. I mean, conscious behavior is the in intersection of awareness and impact. And this loop of conscious learning keeps us forever growing and learning, which we have to. And we have a lot to learn about expanding into positive energy. It's not good, bad, right, wrong, but you're on this call and, you know, uh, interested in shift codes because we're a, you know, conscious group of people and really want to keep our learning and growth going. I, I was impressed with all the introductions. I thought, well, gosh, let's just turn off my webinar. Let's hear from all of you. So, you know, I'm excited to hear from you one day and what you what you're up to. But 
So let's just take a moment now about positive energy and open it up for discussion, comments, challenges, agreements, disagreements, any of that from the group. Enough of me talking. I have a question, Abby. I mean, obviously, as, as a consumer of your book and, um, and a follower of your work, I, I know these things, but I don't always, they're not habits yet. H how do we go from, oh, yeah, to actually making it a habit? Yeah, great question. And this is one of the hard, it's simply said, but for some reason, it's the hardest thing for people to do. So every, everybody on the call, you have a hobby of some sort. So I've been like, I've been swimming uh, laps and I'm, I relearned butterflies. So think about, just think of, I'm not going to ask you to report out, but just think about a hobby you had, right? So I can remember getting in a pool, like when I was in Marin County and I, I was taking up swimming again and I did a, a, la a lane, a lap of, one length a butterfly and I knew the lifeguard and she we she just we were just laughing hysterically at how horrible my butterfly was you know so what did I do I broke it down and got into different phases of it how to learn the stroke I went to YouTube and all that it's the exact same thing with our behavioral habits but they're not as physically um recognizable as um learning how to be present or learning how to speak more positively because we have to overcome the brain's conditioning. So, so Terry, to go back to your point, it's like, you know, I have, this is why I have worksheets for everything. I have worksheets and handouts for everything because you stop and you say, okay, what's my relationship to positive energy? Now, can I recognize the different elements of positive energy and how I can express them more clearly? So it requires training like literally practice so i pri i choose a low i recommend you choose a low stakes uh partner to practice with one your spouse you know best friend a colleague at work and any of that and it's it's where it gets tough is because with the skills i teach as opposed to swimming butterfly you go to youtube look it up move your arms and legs and that's it but where this gets um high stakes is because it's really we're talking about how we're behaving and how we're relating so if you have someone practicing alongside you then you start to operate under a different context and you really start to see the benefits of the transformation i'll call it um, that comes through uh showing up in a more satisfying manner so did i answer your question terry that was a bit long-winded yeah and and um i i think one of the tips that you talked about in one of the other webinars about being still is is and I, I'm going to paraphrase it because I applied it in a way that works for me is I actually now have scheduled pauses um, and where I meditate during the day and sometimes I just lay down for 30 minutes and sometimes I sit outside and I, I have one in the morning now and one in the afternoon and and I feel like that um, it's almost like a positive release mm -hmm. of getting out of the you know, cranking creates the space for me to then invite in um, more positive energy. So that was one of the practical techniques um, because I can train myself ad nauseum, um, but it's the behavior changes that really, for me, sometimes I struggle with because I do have a lot on my plate. So that would be one thing I know for me that I took away from the webinar that you did on stillness is that it's okay to schedule stillness. And I think you do that. You have a, a silent retreat that you do once or twice a year, which I'm starting, I'm going to try it. That's one of my commitments for 2023 to add that in. But I've now put them in almost every morning and almost every afternoon. I have a break to just be still. Um, and create that space to allow the positive energy to grow. Yes, and I'm plus one that, yeah, excellent. I'm, I'm all for, stopping is the ultimate disruptor. You all know how to go and keep doing things. I'm not saying don't do things that you're successful, keep being successful. But we have to overcome conditioning in a modern world. So, so it's even so much as I love that you schedule it. So I used to schedule it too, and I still schedule silent retreats and I'm silent at least one day a month in my home here. But in the day to day, yes, and in the day to day, like I have friends and we get on the phone, how are you? I'm good. You're good. 
I stop doing that. I just say, if I say I'm good, I say, wait a minute. I say, let's slow down for a second. Actually, here's what's going on for me right now. You know, I'm getting ready. What's really true for me is I'm getting ready to move. So I feel excited and a little bit bittersweet and all that as opposed to good, great. So it's, but the, remember conditioning is useful. It's really useful. If we didn't have conditioning, we'd be able to drive home. We'd have to use so much of our prefrontal cortex to go downstairs and make tea, right? Like, wait, where's the teapot? Where's the, you know, and think about it this way too. Let, let's say you go, you travel, you stay uh, at your homes. You probably don't have to turn the light on in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, right? You probably, because it's so conditioned, you know where the hallway is or whatever in your home. Now, when you go to a hotel, what, you know, you wake up, it's a little bit like, where am I? And hopefully there's enough light coming under the door to be able to, that you can get to the bathroom. But sometimes you have to turn the light on and think, okay, where am I? That's exactly what I'm talking about here except we don't focus on our behavior. Behavior is the blind spot of our time. You know, we used to work in factories and didn't have to coordinate and cooperate and collaborate so much. So this is now um, our challenge of a lifetime, if you will. So that was a bit long-winded. So let me open it up um, also. You can tell I'm passionate about the, this topic. Who has questions, comments, pushback, anything? Yeah, I do, I would like Abby. To say Oh, Oops. Nope. sorry, go ahead, go ahead Ray. All go right, ahead, so Ray. yeah, uh, first of all, um, thank you for focusing in on being specific when sharing, whether it's something, you know, compassionate achievement, recognition, those types of things. So yeah, I, I agree entirely with that. And I loved your, um, your word, um, satisfying. So coming from a satisfying manner. And uh, one of my teachers, has shared that you know even when we're we're feeling angry or we're we're feeling less than or we're feeling fear to just point to the next satisfying thought we can have that'll get out of there. It's not going to reach happiness necessarily, but it's going to point us in a new direction, some new thinking that'll create some new feelings and get us out of that cycle of suffering. And so I just wanted to add that as an element. Yes, Anne. Yeah, appreciate that. It, it's like, that's that, you know, happiness overlay. It's like, I, I, I strive for, don't strive for, but I'm seeking like peace, ease, or freedom, not to be happy all the time. Like, there's a lot going on. We're just, you know, it just, there's just a hurricane that blew through Beaufort here where I am. Oh, you think I'm happy about that? No. You know, so I'm appreciating what you're saying. And you just big yes, and to that. Who else? Somebody else wanted to chime in. Hi, Abby, I'm Kathy. I, I'm so happy I tuned in today because <laughs> this is just everything I do in Shipco blows my mind, but whatever. <laughs> um, I, about a year ago, I stopped saying I'm good. You know, when people would ask me, how am I? I just got so, I got tired of hearing it. I'm like, why am I just wrapping Everything that is me, which is huge, by the way, I'm like, I'm like a giant magical creature and I'm telling people I'm good. Like that doesn't even make sense to me. And um, <laughs> so I, I tried to find, like, I didn't want to get into an hour of what's going on, Yeah. but I tried to find one or two sentences that, you know, either said something about how I'm feeling or something about what I'm doing. Usually it's a travel related item. Um, because that seems to be a huge focus in my life. And, um, and the response I got from that was unbelievable. I mean, you know, usually, how are you? I'm good. Okay, you good too? Great. All right. And then you just move on. <laughs> and then the next thing I would say, you know, you know, I, well, I remember when I joined Shiftco, that was a big one. I said that for a long time. I joined this entrepreneur program and it is blowing my mind. Like literally, that's all I would say. And then the, it was like our conversation went to a whole level of, of joyful, you know, well, this is what I'm doing and, you know, that kind of thing. So this has just taken that and made it 
like a thousand times. So thank you. And I'm going to look for, I'm now going to start stalking you. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Kathy, we can say, um, I'm feeling pretty beachy today, or I'm in a Caribbean <laughs> vibe, or I think, yeah. I think I'm feeling very European, you know, yeah. like, we can work in the yes. travel. Right. It's like, yes. it's more accurate. Like, so then, so then it's not a transaction, you know, here's my dime, here's your dime. Well, like, okay. You know, Instead, it's like, oh, well, Shifco is blowing my mind or like, you know, I'm really excited about moving out west. You know, I just was out there. It's like then we we see ourselves and then we're seen. Right. And we all love to be seen. Look, let's face it. I don't want to parents did the best they could. None of us were seen as kids. Let's just check that box. So let's, you know, let, then we can be adults and see ourselves and invite a more satisfying, again, conversation where you know, you get to know me quicker. We, we don't have to, we can just, good, great. Okay, yeah, well, well what's now? You know, it's like, oh my God, just shoot me, right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm really appreciating too, like the acknowledgement of the congruency of, or the incongruency of you saying I'm good. Like, yeah, you, you, I've seen everybody on this call. It's got energy. You seem really fascinating. Like, I want to know all of you. Just say I'm good. Okay, well that doesn't tell me anything, and it doesn't match who you are. So I, I'm appreciating the um, your contribution here, and, and definitely like that's it in motion. Like that's it in action, right? Shifting from I'm good to shift goes blowing my mind, and then that invites me. What's blowing my mind? Or actually, my mind's not blown. I'm pretty stressed right now. But even that's like, you know what I mean? More real. So thank you for that. And can I add, Abby? Um, Absolutely. So I'll use your word plus. Uh, it builds relationship. <laughs> Good doesn't build a relationship. When you get specific about something, then you create this interest and you create a new relationship. That's right. Right. Then we're relating. We're not, again, you know, the, then it's not transactional, you know, and sometimes it's okay for interactions to be transactional you know there's a few times i'm like can we just be quicker on email because i'm busy and i do want to just get this done and people are like yeah of course because there's a time for that but we just can't connect when we're i'm good you're great okay now you know what everybody's great so hi abby caesar here i'm so glad that i was able to dial in i, I went to 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 click on the link and it's like you got to register first i'm like oh i'm gonna miss it or i'm gonna show up late um but the plus one again on can you hear me okay Thumbs yes up? yep yeah great um, thank you yep i loved hearing that natural progression and then you said you know everybody's got their magic word right i'm playing my bingo card for the things i do and you know people putting their energy and emotion to be kinetic leaders in lead space and in one of the disciplines, it's more about the social capital. One of the first things I start with is, is that relationships. And, and, and Ray, you, you said the relationships word, and then Abby, you said connect. And I think to pause there in that moment, space and time, like we don't even realize it. When you say you're good right after that, I, I'm fascinated by, you know, let's say that Terry just put us here in a room and we were just all sitting here and I saw Abigail, a, Abby, and I we would naturally, we naturally want to connect. And you know, like when you meet somebody, if you're just in a waiting room, you'd be like, hey, hey, where are you from? We're trying to find something that we, you know, well, I'm from Washington State. Well, I'm not. I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, I've never been out to that state. The Alabama game was on this weekend. Do you watch? I mean, we are going to, we not, there's not, there wasn't an order, an email or a directive for us to do that, but we are naturally trying to connect. Mm -hmm. something and then to connect build and drive and i go through, we can go through all that later but once that connection on those few things then you can start building that trust and another thing what i'm so excited about listening to you today is i'm a big believer in that you know scholar practitionership you know if you told me a bunch yeah. of theories today and didn't say where the rubber meant the road i was gonna be like i'm like well abby's part of the rocking chair crew but you're not <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not just going to give me something fun to do and I'm going to feel really good about myself. But at the end of the day, I'm like, heck, I don't know really what to go do. You've given us some very tactical things, I believe. And 
And one term I didn't hear that I'd love to hear more. And I have, I can't wait to read the book. I, it's not many times that you get to get so excited about a book and talking and listening to the author and go, are you kidding me? I'm probably gonna run somebody over the road if, if I had a bookstore here to run to real quick. But one term is, you know, at, at weapon school, you know, they don't do it a lot in the Air Force, but at weapon school, you're all experts in the power of the debrief. The power of the debrief, yeah, we have to have thick skin, but the power of the debrief is that authentic dialogue. You know, there's an, we've connected in relationship. I have an authentic dialogue with the pilot. I'm telling him, dude, you died here today. You, you can say you didn't, but if you did that real world, you died. So we have that authentic, I'm getting chills thinking about it, but it's through that connection, that deeper dive, that connection. And Ray, thank you for that relationship. And that was a long winded because I'm just excited too. So this is where I'll shut up. No, no, I, thank you for that. And I want to point out something really that you brought up among everything you said was just amazing. And we always debrief for the negative. So like we never debrief for the positive. I'll add to that. Like, okay, what went well? So what should we continue? So I used to do that on my team. There was like, we got to debrief. Okay, what went wrong, blah, blah, blah. And then when something went well, I'm like, let's debrief. To The team would be like, why do we have to debrief? Because we want to learn what's going well also. Notice the negativity Absol bias, right? Absolutely. And to, to extend that a little farther, that authentic dialogue, nobody wants to be pointed at as being the debrief focal point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But with that type of relationship, you know, you're going to list through a bunch of contributing factors, but to, to like get this highly high learning, you know, group to go, Hey, this one thing, if we change this one thing, this could be our debrief focal point that maybe we go do this again. And, you know, we didn't have a backup event if zoom didn't work. Did we have backup comms for this? You know, maybe we would go back and go this one debrief focal point. If we would have had maybe not just a secondary comm backup, but maybe a tertiary, you know, a third, we'd be good to go. I'm, I promised I was going to shut up. That's no, to you. no, yeah, I appreciate. It. I love the enthusiasm. I'm happy with the enthusiasm, and and here's you know. So Kathy asked you, what's the name of the book? So uh, here, let's here. Let me just show it to you here. You so my to, book I'll, is called Evolution I'll put Revolution. It in, I'll put a link in. What's that? I'll put an Amazon link in while you're doing that. Yeah, great, great. Yeah, so it's called Evolution Revolution. I'm very pleased it's resonating with you all, but it has very little to do with me and I, I'll, I'll take credit for it. But really what happened is I left Wall Street. We have a few minutes here. Yeah, I left Wall Street and took a lot of my best practices from my leadership days and just cultivating teams and grooming people and mentoring and all of that. But I left uh, when I left Wall Street, I started coaching and I started to be asked questions I logged all of the questions. There were 500 to 600 of them. So I just logged all the questions I was asking, was asked. And then I put them into uh, themes and that's where the book came from. So it's a book of skills. So I'm, I'm very pleased it, it resonates for you. And, and my ability is to take a lot of information and simplify it. So I'm I'll, happy to take credit, not dismissing myself through this, but it resonates with people because it's from people like you, right? So people were asking me questions. How do I manage tensions? How do I show up better? How do I thrive? You know, how do I be more positive? I'm stuck in the, in the mud. Like, how do I give feed? How do I give and receive feedback? How do I listen? Um, how do I get unstuck in any pattern? So all of these um, questions that I was asked, I basically put together um, a bunch of skills, started to teach those. And then the next thing you know, seven people said, you should write a book. So here I am. So I appreciate that and happy to take credit for what I put out there. And it's, it resonates because it's from people like you. It's from just people wanting to show up, wanting to have higher self-esteem, wanting to feel satisfied, wanting to learn, you know, wanting to be able to recover quickly from our mistakes and when we do harm. And all that. So I really appreciate the, the comments here. And with that, we have a few more minutes left here. And it, you know, um, this will be recorded and on the Shiftco YouTube page and the other uh, webinars I've done. If you want to get a little more of that, there's a window into conscious leadership, uh, another peek into conscious leadership, something on self esteem, something on diversity and inclusion. So feel free to go out and watch uh, as well as all the other Shiftco. Uh, webinars and info that's on the YouTube page, as well as the Shipco site. My courses are there. So with a few minutes here, what, what final, about four minutes, I think five minutes, what final questions, comments, burning, 
you know, I take challenges too. I'm happy to be challenged. Well, I'm going to start practicing immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for somebody to call me. <laughs> They're going to be like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Um, I will say one, one other thing, like when I started saying, uh, stop saying I'm good. After that, after a while of that, if somebody said it to me, like I would call them and say, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? And they'd say, good. And I'd say, okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> they go, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of like makes them go, okay, wait a minute. I have more to say. So, yeah. But thank just, you, Abby. Yeah. And thank no. you, Terry, as always. Yeah. Thank you. And I just want to reiterate that's, that's the skill is to stop and come off of the conditioning and say, okay, how am I really? What do I really want to communicate here? And, and um, number one, and then number two, you know, how can we be more positive, get off the negativity bias in, in the world? What else? Final questions, comments, or anything from Terry on Shifco also? I'm okay, putting so, the yeah, go ahead. Link go ahead. your book in, Abby, um, on Amazon. And then also um, for Shifco members, Abby's course is Conscious Leadership Basics. And it really brings the book to life in very practical terms. That's what I love. One of the main things I love about her work is very practical. And then if you're not a member on the YouTube page, um, you also can check out um, some of the other programs and, and not, uh, members can look there as well. Um, but the course I felt like walks you through the steps and the book is very practical as well. And then Abby, talk a little bit about conscious leadership online and um, some of the other things that you do there. And then we'll yeah. just- Yeah, so, you know, if you're a Shift Co member, go to my courses there because you get them by being a member. So I highly recommend that. You can go to consciousleadership.online. That's, a, you, first of all, you can go to abigailstason.com, but consciousleadership.online. I took the, the all the worksheets. So for a very good price at $250, you have access to the book and all the worksheets, only a couple of videos. So it's a, it's a deep dive self-study program. Then I also am using one huddle that's a gaming platform that has all the courses on it. And then, you know, from now until year end, all these courses will be built out in very um, deep uh, lanes, like you know, it, it'll be a really robust online offering because people have been, you know, they're like, why don't you write a book? And now they're saying, why don't you have online products? So all of that's available to you. So go to my website at abigailstation.com or consciousleadership.online and right away, get go to the Shiftco site because I'm at, you know, Shiftco and I have a great partnership and I want to be able to offer these to all of you. So you can go there to take those courses and not pay a penny, you know, other than what you pay to Shiftco. Awesome, Abby. Thank you again for your work and thank you for supporting the conscious business movement. Um, and thank you to everybody that attended today. Please also, I would encourage you to connect with Abby on LinkedIn as well. She always shares inspirational little tidbits and, um, you know, she's just somebody that's really good to know. So Abby, thank you so much for your work. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Love the dialogue. Yeah, and link up with me, uh, reach out anytime. So happy to see you all. And yeah. Wake up. Let's wake up together. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Let the stalking begin, right? That's right. Thank you all. <laughs>